Okay, I'm getting ready to do a little welding here. So this case was welded up here. And they didn't quite put enough material right here. Actually, what happened is they, they melted the side of the way there, the boss. So they didn't put it back. So instead of being a straight up boss like this side, it's angled away because it's all melted. So I got to put a little weld right there so I have a nice round boss here to put a plug to seal against. So right now it's a little bit low right through here. So I'm going to have to do something about that. It's also colder than hell right now, so that is not helping welding at all. I don't wear gloves very often. In my hat. But oh well. Alright, we'll see how this works. See how the video works in welding. It was working halfway decent last time we did it. Okay. Okay, so we can get hot enough to weld, first problem. Uh, next problem is welding rod. I missed some pieces I'm supposed to have here. Alright. Time to get my hands warmed up. Okay, take those off. Take that off. Whew. Got the welding gloves. Just a little bit so I can weld it. Not too much because I'm just going to get in and get out real quick. I do, have to weld it. I do have to warm up a little bit so it won't crack. hand warmer, good for me. But I got a weld. Alright. Not much of a weld. It's gonna be in and out.
need much, I'll need about 30 thou in one spot. Okay, this is warmed up now. Including me. when you leave the valves open. Okay. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Let's see. These are mechanics gloves. I wonder how much heat they'll take. We'll find out. Ah. See, right now the case will warm me up. Which is a plus. Hopefully I put enough weld on there. If not, I get to come back and do it again. I don't know what's in the bag. I don't feel like anything's in the bag. Okay. So anyway, there's the repair. See where I welded on the side right? Whoop. Right along in here is where I put the weld. Ooh, still a little hot right there. See how the smoke in my gloves are coming off that? These are not welding gloves, these are mechanics gloves. Might destroy I'm doing this. All right, I'll go back to the machine shop. I'll be back. Okay, a case over cooling off, and then I notice uh, I got by here. I see this line right here. Easy when you see a spot like that going across the case, that's a crack. Letting oil out of it. It's easy what that means. This here's all the porosity holes, all these little small holes through here. You can see all them sticking up through there. That's where the oil's coming out and burns out when it gets hot. So I flipped, I don't see anything on this side, so I flipped the case over to look, see what's going on here. And now I see a bunch of stuff I don't really like too much. I see all of these marks right through here. Now are those cracks or are those casting marks? That's these things right there. See how they got an X pattern to them across? And see how those zigzags all the way down through there? So, is that a crack or a casting mark? That is your big problem. Now, that can be from when it got welded before over here. When they welded up that whole underside over here, pull back a little bit. When they welded up all through here, if they didn't preheat the case like I did, when this stuff cools off, it pulls the case real strong and it pulls the case apart and cracks them. So there might be a crack there or might not, it depends on what it is. That's the problem, we don't know what the thing is. All I know is right now, I don't like it. It's a little hot in here, so I'm trying to see what that is. So I don't know what this is right now. I'm going like this, it feels like a casting flaw. Hot on my finger too. It's sticking up. So that might just be a casting plaw problem. Hard to tell. Alright, so I was gonna really go back and re-weld this thing, but it feels like it's a high spot. Alright, so I'm gonna leave it. So I don't see anything on this side over here that looks like a casting problem or a crack under there anywhere that really can see anything. So, I'm going to go ahead and machine this, and then I'm going to go blast this thing clean, and then see if anything comes up. I'll put some, uh, something on the inside of the case and see if it leaks through. If it leaks through, then we know there's a crack there. But it's got to be totally clean to tell that. So, so for now, I'm going to go ahead and blast this. So you can see I put that extra material on there. So hopefully that's enough. And it didn't stick super good with this on there. All right, so I don't like seeing evidence of cracks. So that's definitely stuff you do not want to be seeing. Or something that's welded on recently. Okay. So 
So I'm going to do a little bit of machining over here. Got a nice burn on the inside of my wrist from the stud. You know, hot stings always find a spot to burn you. Yeah. I know it's a good hand warmer. Okay. So now we're going to hold this thing down flat. First problem is that's in the way, like most of the time. It's hot. Okay. So a couple of tool bits here to get you above the top surface here. markers. Oh, that actually lines up pretty close. coming for me. Building blocks. Ah. Burn myself over here. Things are just tall enough to burn you. So you can mill that all flat. Alright. 
chip to go that way. Soft around the road and back. That's not good. Soft welding rod. So soft welding rod does not machine very good. This part over here is where I weld it. See, it's hard. You can see a different color of the material. That's hard rod right through here. This is soft. This is 4043. This is 5356. Whenever you got to do any machining or tapping, you want to use the hard rod so it's nice and strong. Soft rod is not good for that purpose. It's too gummy and soft. Good for doing repairs on the side and stuff where it doesn't matter. Determine what height this needs to be. Always want to be as thick as you can without being a problem. So I think that's about how high it's supposed to be. Going by the evidence of where things are at on the side. You're looking at the height here, what you think the height was the original boss was. So you can see how it looks like original material right here. Doesn't look like it's been built up. So I'm right at the top of the where the original material height is. So that's what you're looking for. Can't tell how thick it is. But you can see we've got a big porosity hole right here, which is going to be a problem too, I'm sure. And that's going to get worse, not better. So where's my pick at? Ah. See how deep that is. It doesn't look too deep. Oop, just sunk in a big hole. So there's a big hole right there. The problem is that's right on the edge of our gasket surface. So that means I get to go back and weld it again right there. So we have to V that out a little bit. Your half inch bolt, half inch hole is going to be here to here. Yeah. It's going to be right where the threads are. It needs to be filled in. Wonderful. See, when I weld stuff, I don't get them big holes and everything like that easily. Because I burn out the crap before I lay it in there. Okay, so that's got a big porosity hole that needs to be filled in. So the best way to do that is just to spot it in with like a drill. Cuts it out real quick. Then you come back and weld it. Wonderful. See, it saves me time when I have friends do other stuff. When the customer takes someone else to have them do it. No, I get to redo it. I've already redone it once. And I get to redo it again. No cost savings to me. It cost me time and effort. Oh well. Life in the big city. 
Let's see, I think I just spot that with a drill bit. Uh, we'll just find something to use that's halfway decent in size. There's a good size right there. Yep, that'll work. It'd be nice if we got a size that was down. Size I can use. There we go. This decent one, I'll put a drill chuck in here. something sharp helps to have a rag around it saves your meat meat grows back slowly so it's best to keep it on your hand all right so now you kind of spotted it and you can also see the little porosity right off the side there still in there so I'm gonna go ahead and go in this torque I'm gonna weld that again right now real quick right there get it good and hot burn that in and I'll be right back all right back from welding so you can see where I welded everything up all over there so it had a lot of porosity and crappy weld there so I welded the top onto it most of that's gonna get cut off again but anyway at least it's got a good weld on top at least for now but like I said I'm cutting it off but uh, you know we'll see what it looks like after I cut it I could always leave a little bit on there and have a little bit hard run on top make it seal better because how much I cut off we'll see All right. case is definitely hot right now so you'll be careful about touching it anywhere burn me again
Okay, we'll go with that. All right. So no more porosity holes. Yeah, a little bit of one right there. A small one on the edge. All right, so. Definitely hot. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole in the center of that and then drill and tap it for a plug. First thing I do is we get our, get our filler plug so we know what, uh, what size we're gonna make it. This is a 65, so it should have like a half inch plug in it, I think. I'll go look on the book and see what it's gonna be for sure. So we'll be back. Okay, we're back. All right, the, um, the correct uh, plug is a number 707 Harley plug, which is a half inch 13, half inch 13 threaded plug hole, plug. I couldn't find any new plugs there. Peter says I have, but I couldn't find it after half hour all looking, so I gave up. All right, so what you're gonna do, I'm gonna take this nut here, and I'm gonna use this for alignment so I can tell where it's gonna sit, because you can tell pretty easy where it's centered on this or not. You can also use a washer if you want. So what you do is you just take a drill bit, find one that fits in a hole pretty good, you stick that in your drill chuck here, and that'll line it up for you. Obviously, I gotta drop this down a little bit more. All right, so. Looks good. All right. Tight fit there. Well, we use some reamer then maybe. Cause that one sucked. That was a twenty three sixty four. Drop it even further. I'm going to have to put it all the way back up to do the actual drilling. Looks pretty close to me. So I just come off the two flats here, you just move it back and forth, try to make sure you're kind of in the center. Then you go over here, turn it where the flats are there, and do the same thing again. Looks pretty close, you're probably close. It has this hump off the side, so it kind of gives you a false illusion that you're not where you belong. See how close that one is, see how far away you're on that one. But when you line them up off the, those edges, you're pretty close. Could move it over just a tick. A little bit more. And it, if it doesn't look right, change it. Dead center is always, not always what it looks like it's on center. You got oblong shaped boss. Things could be looking different. All right, <clears throat> so you get me pretty close. Okay. This big long one here is starting to go up so high.
Okay, come down, put a little mark on there. See if it looks good to you. Looks pretty close. Everything looks good. Go for it. Let's turn the RPM down a little bit though. There, about 800. We're doing dummy stuff here. All right. There you go. That part looked good. I'm going to drill it. What's up, Scooby? Scooby came for a visit. Scooby's visiting. What you doing, Scooby? Eh, what do you want? You wake up? Must be dinner time for you, huh? Yeah, you tired? Ready for a nap? You just got up. Alright, enough Scooby. Scooby, come over to help. Alright. Scooby's going to be in my way over here. All right, you can see all the different colors of aluminum as we went through there. So a little bit of porosity on this side, but not too bad. Okay, we got to find our tap center drill. Not tap center, tap drill is all we need. Okay, we're doing a half inch 13, so we want a 2764 is what we're looking for. That appears to be right there, which is what this big one was. So that's our tap drill. Boom. So you just pound that on through. inch 13 tap. I'm going to run that thing right on through there. I also want to chamfer the top hole slightly. can't find my chamfer tool so I'll go over here and grab one. There's a little short one right here. Probably won't fit. Good. I can crank it up a little bit. All right, that's enough. Get tired. Okay, we're just going to spot this. Okay. So there is a little chamfer on the top. So the hole doesn't look too bad. Don't see much porosity in there, so that's a good sign. All right, so I'm just going to power this thing on through. That means I'm going to use the metal machine to do it. Okay, get a little oil in here. I just use southern honing oil out of my hone over there in the corner. Looks pretty good for normal applications. Okay, I'm just going to run this thing right on through. Power tap. Okay. Clean our mess up now.
back in there. Okay, so there's your thread in there, all the way through. So we got a sharp edge here, we don't have a chamfer. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down there and chamfer a little bit. Not very much, just gotta break the edge. You run your finger across, if you're not digging into your finger, you're enough. If you make it too big, the gasket area won't be nothing to seal against, which would be a bad thing. So this is pretty deep thread now. So I don't know how much higher we are than stock on the overall height. It was pretty tall to begin with, so I'm good with it. So all I'm gonna do is go back and debert around the outside edges, make it look a little cleaner. Now you can do it on a milling machine if we wanted to by uh, doing a boring, boring deal. So that's something I can do. Which makes it look a lot better, it just takes a lot more time. It's on the bottom of a tranny, like you're not going to really see it all that much, but... Yeah, what the hell. I have a battery going on there, it's freezing my butt off, so... It doesn't take much to do it. Gotta change the tools out, that's all. See, once you're all set up, it's pretty easy. Something with a big radius. So we have to go over here to our uh, older tools. Find something with a big radius. Scooby's over there sleeping again. Are you sleeping, Scooby? Scooby's sleeping. Okay, we'll put our tools away over here. So that goes there. Oh, we just lost one. That's where that goes. Back in here. Grab my missing tool I'm gonna need later. Okay, that goes over here. Okay, these are large radius tools. See, this one's pre-made for some other application I don't do anymore. It should be perfect for this application. See how that will come down and put a nice chamfer all around. That'll look like a case is supposed to be that way. So we're gonna do that. What's happening? Ooh, cold. All right. We got tools we need. Okay, this is reversing. here uh, getting close Make small adjustments in the angles and a little bit positive to it right now that should work It's about cutting angles when it comes to machining. So you want this to be basically on center with this or thereabouts. Now I put a little bit of positive rake to it like instead of being dead straight there it's got just a little bit of rake to it. But also if you look at it we're all centering a hole up here which gives you a positive angle also when you move it off center here and move it a little bit further forward. It's the same as giving you a positive rake because it moves it off the center. So we've got double positive rake on it right now. But it's got it's crappy aluminum, so I think it's going to need that. Okay, so we're going to basically just go down now. And with luck, we can go in close enough to make this work. Where's my tool at? Okay, that's going to knock a big chunk off right there pretty quickly. Okay, now we got to cut this, limit how deep we go. So we don't want to go much more about here, it looks like. So, 
That should pop off pretty close. Just to make sure we'll back this off a half a turn. So we don't power into it. Okay, now I'm going to do a little test. Make sure you pull that thing up before we get test. Okay. Go the right direction. Reverse the action. Now we're heading down. Okay. Now we go ahead and feed this up until we hear something hit. Okay, I've done it quite a bit. Let's take a look to see what we got for clearances here. Okay, I'm getting close to that. Uh, what else do we got here? If I can go up another 20 or so more at least. I want to make sure you don't touch right here. So I still got a little bit, but I don't want to go too deep. I'm going to start getting this radius right in here. I don't want to be into that, so I'm going to back that back up 20. You can always come back and make it deeper. Okay, so we got that set. Oop, come over here. Just back over and get to it. Got too many tools in the way. Okay, we're going to jack this thing out a little bit. Should be a big cut. Drop and slow away from me. There we go. I give a little bit back. Okay, now you got a nice round boss. You can see we're just starting to cut in the original material here a little bit. There you go. Looks a lot cleaner than it did. Looks like a lot more you're in center now, too. Hmm, imagine that. Okay, now all you do is give a light file across the top to knock off the edge. It should look pretty good. Now, if you want to, you can still come in here and dremel that in a little bit to make it look cleaner, which I probably will because I'm picky. You got this much trouble to make it look nice, you might as well go all the way, right? Okay, there's that. Okay, I'm gonna cut her out. I could come across and cut down the tool if I wanted to also. Always another tool you can use besides hand. You probably want to do one with a deburring uh, grinding burr. Yeah, I've got too many things in the way to do it by hand. Okay. So we'll go back and do it by hand, we'll be back. Alright, do a little grinding right now. Deburr this thing, blend it in. Huh. Cold back here. It's relatively small, about the right size. It's a little bit on the sharp side though, which I don't like. This one here is a little, little bit bigger down, or dollar. This one's pretty sharp, so you gotta be careful. So I'll knock off the heavy stuff with the sharp one and slip over the other.
That'd be the noisemaker right there. Okay, so we'll get a nice radius edge on here. So you rock your, you run your hand across. If you're feeling kind of a sharp edge, you just come back and cut away until it's gone. That's why I kept coming back on it. This will all blend in pretty good after I blast it. You won't even hardly see that it's been welded at all here. That'll all kind of just blend in. So when you're all done, it should look pretty good. So that's what it looks like. So. Takes a little extra time to make it really nice, but yeah, what the hell. Now, they put way too much weld down on there, that's why it's so thick. That's why this is so thick here, right there, is because they put way too much metal down on there. You see, the original depth is way, way, way down there. Can't even see it in my hand anyway. Okay, there's your original depth, way, way down there. So they're way up here, it's a half inch higher up right here, probably. So they get a little carried away when they welded it up. Now right now you got a little bit of a sharp edge right here I don't like, so I'm going to just hit that with a dead grinder, knock that out a little bit, and call it done. So then we go ahead and go uh, blast this thing and get it all cleaned up and ready for assembly. Alright, so that's how you fix the case.